well, a day or a week, I don't know, anyway, whatever you want to say in the life of a beekeeper. We were here yesterday and we were full arsing around giving these girls a few patties and it had come to my attention that they'd basically chewed through all the stores they had in their supers. So I've made the decision that we're going to take the supers off and ramp them down a little bit, which will make it easier to feed the patties to them, give them a lot less room that they have to keep warm, make my job easier to feed them. So I've had this great idea that I've brought myself a texter, nipped into Loxton Hardware, got myself a texter, so I'm going to put a number on the bottom and on the top, and then we'll be able to put them back on the boxes that they came off of. Since my lovely lady in pink isn't here to do her special card, sometimes you just got to improvise. One and a two and a three and a four. Get away, little lady. Come on, I'm, no, I'm getting a bee suit on. Get away. She says there's something bad happening. There's a bloody big white polar bear near our home. And if they go back home to the box and they go, them bloody humans are back again. <laughs> Get ready, girls, here they come. <laughs> they don't know I've got their best interest at heart sometimes, I don't think. They just think I'm a bloody inconvenience, but oh, well, I probably am, but still. Right, so I've got this great idea. Gonna see if my lung cameraman can be a multitasker. You see, I'm gonna get him to film and drive the car. I don't know, we we'll probably have to sit the... Talking about setting up the camera, the young lad's got himself all enthused and bought me my own GoPro so I can film some stuff when he's not here. So if you get some footage going forward that's not quite as brilliant as when he's filming, don't hold him responsible. It's that ruffian that's been left in charge of some GoPro footage. If you have a bit on your video where it's actually just got a little bit of a blank spot, you'll know that was my bit. <laughs> He'll be like, beep. <laughs> so the dear wife's not here to help us out today. So we're back to old school, back to putting a bit of a mark on here. I don't think it's going to be highly probable political. We've got some that have got the same numbers anyway, but I'd like to put them back on the boxes that they came off. So here goes nothing. Well, hopefully when you come back in spring, you'll be able to see whether we've got the numbers matching up. What happens when you get to 10? Run out of fingers. I have to take my boots off so I can get to 20 at least. mean what happens when I get to 10? I can at least count more than 10. Piss off. <laughs> oh shit, that's a terrible six. You know what's interesting? You get talking to people and they're making the eights. Some people do two little circles, some people do the back to the front. I can do it every which way, so apparently I'm a bit of a problem child because my maths teacher used to get excited because she liked her eights. She had to have her eights looking all pretty and they were on a little bit of an angle and she was all a bit pedantic about eights. I don't know. Sometimes school teachers just get weird about the strangest things. I don't think I was her favourite student, though. <laughs> I think that looked more like a G than a nine. Now we're in trouble. Apparently when we get to ten, we're in all sorts of trouble. What is that top one? Yeah, they do. It's a nine with whiskers. <laughs> Maybe it's an old nine. <laughs> Shut up, you. <laughs> Oh, I'm trying to try to trying to write the thing so you can get the camera angle right. It's all upside down and back to the front and lefty righties. And then you see you're making eleven, you get two ones together. And if you put a plus sign in there, you'd really only have two, wouldn't you? But stop it. Oh bloody hell. If we were Romans, that would be a bit more complicated, wouldn't it? Oh, uh-oh. Sorry, these guys are unlucky because they're 13. Just as well it's not Friday, they'd be extra unlucky, wouldn't they? I think these poor little ladies are in strife. Oh, maybe not. Hang on. Maybe they're not dead. I thought they were in trouble. <laughs> Perhaps they're getting robbed. Now I've got to have a proper look. Ah, oh, man. Hang on. <laughs> Means I've got to get a glove on now. <laughs> Decisions on the run. <laughs> now we'll just pop this off for here. Oh shit, hang on, maybe they're upstairs. What the fuck are they doing up there? Well, there's either somebody up here stealing all this stuff, or they're living up here. Let's see what we've got, shall we? Oh, ladies, what are you doing? I don't know, chicks, what are you doing? Because there was no one down here when we were here yesterday. I thought, ah, oh, 
they're not going to be anybody on board but maybe they are either they're living upstairs or they are bloody just robbing the place out <laughs> i don't know i think they're just here stealing shit to be quite honest but these girls look a little bit more relaxed than what i thought they would be if they were in here robbing gear Anyway, we'll just poke this up out of here. Ignore my little queen cage. I just left that up the top so we knew this was a split that had been requeened. They might actually be up here because they're sort of trying to do something here. What have you done, ladies? I'm just wondering if the chief woman's up here or not. Well, they look like a little cluster of them here. Oh, I don't know. There's no eggs there, but they look like they're properly holding together. They're definitely not overfed anyway, that's for sure. <laughs> Oh, you poor little ladies, what are you doing? Hmm. Let's see, I don't know, I reckon. They look like they're actually probably in a proper mood. So we'll, anyway, we'll, what we'll do is we'll pop them downstairs and do what we're going to do. Even though, see now this is when you should bring a bloody bit of food along with you. I didn't bring any paddy with me after all my excitement yesterday because I, I thought this was a dead out. The things that happen when you're beekeeping, it's just always a mystery, isn't it? <laughs> They're getting a little bit of nectar, bringing some nectar in, so maybe they are actually up here. It seems a bit weird, but you know what? Anything's possible. <laughs> this is a strange little world we live in. I reckon they decided to be upstairs for some reason, and I don't exactly know why, because I'm just looking at the frame along, and if they were in here just robbing it out, they wouldn't be full assing about trying to build this comb out, <laughs> would they? They've definitely got themselves hungry along the way, because we, like I said, where we had these, they've Jolly nectar flow died in the arse and it went real cold real quick because our winters snuck up on us. Well, we had winter in autumn, which was a bit weird. I think for the moment, we're just gonna sit them in here together and then we'll watch the, what happens. I didn't really come prepared for this part of the project. Don't turn up to the bee yard unprepared. There's another lesson to be learnt. Cool, so we might stick that down there for now. Runeo. So to me, that doesn't look like they're actually in there robbing stuff there trying to do something so <laughs> I reckon we'll come back and have a review when it's when we've got this job out the way <laughs> I'm all sideways Before I drive up and get the trailer in the shot, I just thought I'd just go into a bit more detail about what we're trying to achieve here. Like, like when we were here yesterday feeding these girls with some patties, there's basically nothing up here in the super that they need because they've cleaned all that out and they're starting to get organized for winter downstairs. I was thinking of an analogy that would make sense to you out there. You know when you've got a space heater and you go down to the hardware store and it has on the space heater thing and it says how many square meters this little heater's meant to heat? If you think of that as a bee box, if this is empty, well, there's all that air space they have to try and warm up to keep themselves warm for the winter. Because, of course, these poor little ladies, the way they generate heat is by rubbing themselves together and flapping their little wings. And what they need to flap their little wings in the middle of winter is some glucose. And so the bigger the area they're trying to heat up, the more honey they burn through and the harder it is for them. So try to make their life as easy as possible. If you're in your backyard and you pick up your bee box and you think, bloody hell, that's pretty light. Give them a fighting chance and bugger the super off until spring. We're gonna try and make their job as easy as possible. And the upside to that is for me, when I'm feeding them patties, I don't have to lift this thing out the way, which is empty. So let's make this shit happen before the weather goes to crap completely. Oh, I was just thinking, it's jolly lucky the wife's been married to a beekeeper for a little while. Just got in the ute and it's one o'clock already. I told her I'd be home for lunch, so. Poof, I think that might be a bust. Might be a late lunch. Hopefully she eats without me, otherwise I'll be in the shit. Gosh, she's cute, the way she puts up with all this nonsense. How the hell does this tool take so long? I never can figure it out. Maybe I'm just having so much fun, I just miss, just fucking get lost in my own madness. I figure since we were here <laughs> not very long ago, we probably shouldn't need the hive tool to break the seal. But, you know what? <laughs> Every time you think you should be right, it doesn't necessarily always play out that way. Got a few girls up here getting excited. Off you get, go on. <laughs> so 
sorry gals. <laughs> There's a change in the weather coming, so they're just a little bit toey. So if you're not actually pressed for time, don't do it just before a mad weather storm's about to hit the thing. We've got a couple of hours yet, but the gals know what's coming, so they're going, get the hell out, we're just trying to get the house ready. Hence why they're just a little bit crazy just at the minute. I'm still not convinced that these bloody fabric straps are any good. I mean, they're, those bloody things stretch a fair way. And when you try to lift a solid box, they don't clamp as good as the old metal ones. But then again, if you're using a foam box or a Jolly Jack, I guess the plastic ones, but foam more so, which is what these were designed for originally, you don't want the metal ones, otherwise you get, by the time you transport the bloody things, the metal straps cut its way through the foam. So, horses for courses. I kind of get into like those blooming new plus boxes with the little wire clip thing, so. Hell, I don't know. We'll see where we end up in 20 years time, eh? Shit, no. Nah, hell. I'll probably be dead. No, maybe not. That'd only make me 70. Apparently 65's when you're old now, not 55. Yeah, I don't know. They keep changing the bloody rules. That's nearly enough entertainment for a Saturday afternoon. Morning, afternoon, I'm not really sure. We're somewhere in between now, we're afternoon. It was morning, but anyway, that's how it goes in the bee yard. Next thing you know, your day's done. If you're wondering as you glance your eyes along the row over here, we've got a couple that we've left the supers on. That was because they'd found some nectar to bloomin' store away. So we thought, well, we'll let them put it up there, dry it out, eat it up, and then I'll come back in another week or so and see what they've done. and sort it out but the weather's gonna go to crap in a minute so we didn't want to be here playing around any longer than we already were and as a footnote feed your patties after you do your bloody de-supering because that was a pain in the ass so stay tuned never know you might learn something with me 